after we decided to make the big move, we knew we needed to make a plan. And we started with compiling a list of crops and their varieties. And we kind of already knew the crops we wanted to grow. Yeah. You know, these are mm -hmm. crops that the medical medium recommends. These are crops that we've been eating the last three years doing this <laughs> protocol. All of our meals. <laughs> <laughs> so that gave us a, a good starting point. And then if you watched our last video or the video uh, questions, uh, questions to ask yourself before you start a farm, in that video we talk a little bit about uh, the farmers market and how we went to the farmers market up here and that's how we scouted out what sort of crops might work mm -hmm. you know we're in uh, the growing zone up here is is very northern so once we figured out our growing zone we were able to, to narrow it in and figure out the specific crops that we wanted to grow for our for our market garden Yep, and so we collected all of that information and then put together our list from there. Okay, who can guess our number one crop, the top of our list? Something that we eat, I'll give you a better hint, drink every single day, lots and lots of it. You wanna tell them? I'll tell them. Celery <laughs> juice, come on, celery. Celery is our number one. Yes. Yeah, so that's our number one. And then another crop that we have every day is cilantro. So that was also at the top of our list. We have that in the heavy metals detox smoothie. Um, that calls for a cup of cilantro per serving. So we usually go at least through a large bunch per day with that. And the next thing on our list is leafy greens. Now this is something we have every single day yes we have it every single day for lunch at least we'll make a big salad or do a big smoothie maybe some lettuce wraps or even the medical medium spinach soup which is so good check it out if you haven't had it before and the crops of course we didn't even talk about the crops yes. and what we're growing so tell them what we're growing <laughs> <laughs> so we're growing uh, leaf lettuce Head lettuce, we're growing spinach, we're growing mache, uh, watercress, we're growing arugula, mustard greens, uh, dandelion greens, kale, and sorrel. So a lot of good leafy greens. And yes. we're trying to keep the detox going. Yes. Keeping the detox going means you're keeping your uh, meals raw and with no fats. Once you start to introduce cooked foods or fats, it sl slows down the detox for the day. And we knew these beds behind us here, getting them set up was going to take some time. One thing we decided on that we would definitely get the greenhouse up first. That way we could get our microgreens up and running. And just like those leafy greens we talked about earlier, these microgreens also contain this thing called elevated biotics. And the elevated biotics you get off of the microgreens or the leafy greens are better than any factory produced probiotic out there. Yep, so we decided we would grow sunflower, pea, kale, fenugreek, um, what am I missing? Lentil. Lentil and mug bean um, for our microgreens. And all of those were recommended by Anthony oh. William, the medical medium. During the summer months, we eat a melon a day. So we definitely wanted to grow melon, but we heard that melon don't do that well up here because they definitely love the heat. So we have a plan to test out melon to see if it works. Yeah, and then behind me here you can see we've got all of our heat-loving crops in the greenhouse enjoying that nice heat. And we're also growing some summer squash, we're growing cucumbers, we're even trying out some peppers. Yes, I hope that those turn out. I love peppers. <laughs> and, then, and then we're growing, of course, 
some tomatoes. Yes, lots of them, lots of them, because I love those too. <laughs> <laughs> we are going big on the tomatoes. We have uh, over 600 plants ready to go in the ground. Yeah, and now we just have to get the beds ready <laughs> so we can get them in the ground. Yeah. One idea we came up with, we're going to give it a go, is doing a little farm stand along the roadside. And that's what we're going to do with a lot of these tomatoes. Yeah. So we're growing a ton of cherry tomatoes, thinking people can just pull over, pick up some cherry tomatoes, and eat them on the road. And then we were also thinking, well, how can we give them some melon? Because we're going to grow a lot of melon <laughs> this year. So we're thinking, do we cut it for them? Can we even, can we even cut melon? <laughs> <laughs> so we're trying to still figure that one out <laughs> I don't know why she thinks it's so funny and then we're also growing a lot of a lot of vegetables so we're going to do a lot of vegetables roadside and then even put some bags of microgreens up there and see how those do so we're close to the beach a lot of tourists around so we figured good opportunity there and let's not forget about the root crops. We're growing radishes and turnips. And with those, you can even eat the green tops. Yeah, and then the other root crops, not just those two. Yes. We're growing some <laughs> onions, some bigger onions, and then the bunching onions. And then I've even got some ginger that we're doing in the greenhouse because ginger likes a lot of heat. And we had to throw in some classic dinner time side dishes. So you've got broccoli, cauliflower, kale, and red cabbage. Unfortunately, these items have been shunned as side dishes for too long, but they can taste so good and we want to make them the main dish. <laughs> so what's awesome about this area is there are a lot of wild herbs, herbs that you can use for medicine. and there's zero maintenance. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to make beds for them. You don't have to bring dirt in. They're there, they're planted, they're doing their thing. And last year what we did was we walked around and started identifying a lot of these plants. And we took them back with us and started making tinctures. Yeah, there's a wild nettle, plantain leaf, yarrow, horsetail, mullein, uh, dandelion, uncia, wild rose, I think I'm missing one. Do you say sheep swirl? And sheep swirl, which is a tongue twister. <laughs> <laughs> all the seeds that we're growing have all ad been adapted to this northern climate. Why that's important is because we want seeds that have grown in a cold climate. Stay tuned as everything unfolds throughout the season. Be sure to subscribe, hit the little bell so you get notified every time that we post a new video. Yeah, and then stay tuned because we will be talking about all of these different varieties as we are talking about each crop. So as we do more and more videos here, you'll start to learn about some of the varieties that we're growing and we're trialing a lot of stuff. So we don't actually know how everything's gonna grow. So we got a lot of different seed varieties in hopes that we can nail it down and figure out what grows best up here. We enjoyed talking about everything with you guys and look forward to watching everything grow together. We will see you on the next one. See you then.